coming up on Man Enough. How do you feel like you've grown since we started? What nobody tells you is that healing is not linear. Healing is not something that you're just, okay, I'm going to go to therapy, and then I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and every week I'm going to feel better. I'm going to get better. Mm -hmm. Like, therapy is not fun. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes you can go backwards. You can mm -hmm. feel like you're regressing. Mm -hmm. You know, when they uh, stirred up the Hudson River, it was a disaster for years. Mm -hmm. And they had to do that in order to clean it out. And that's really what healing is. <laughs> Being man enough, what does that mean? It's really manly to mess up, admit you're wrong, and then grow. I couldn't accept that I was evil, so maybe I'm broken, but those broken things could be corrected. Intimacy between a father and a son is me just wanting to like put my head in your lap. I love you, son. You haven't called me a benevolent sexist, but my experience is women are better. Even if it's a positive, it's still not equality. I don't blame men for that. I just blame the system. This is Man Enough. Hello and welcome to Man Enough. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. 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 Hello. I'm really excited. It's just the three of us today. It's wow. just the three of us. Normally we have a guest on our show. Um, today we thought we would just do the three of us and we'd reflect on some of our dis previous discussions and where we are in the world and have that discussion and maybe just share our hearts and um, accountability and Ooh, reflection and all that good stuff. We love accountability here. Um, yes, we do. So um, let's, let's just get in because, you know, um, I think we all have something maybe to share. Well, let's start with you, Liz. I want to ask you a question. Uh, uh, <laughs> We're getting right into it. Yes, We're, let's just get, get into it. Okay. okay. You um, are on this podcast, Man Enough. You care about this subject so much we know. <laughs> yeah. um, you get a lot of accolades she on. She wrote a book what? She wrote a book called For the Love of Men. She did indeed. Because she does. She's a badass. Men. She's a badass who gets um, a lot of accolades for the work you do. And also you get darts thrown at you for the work you do as well on both sides. I um, do. And maybe you get, I don't know how, what you get for being on a podcast with two men, Justin and I, mm -hmm. who share similar views as you, but also struggle um, always being our best selves because mm -hmm. we want to be, but, and you know, you have to put up with us. But my question more is I'd like to know over the year and a half that we've been doing this, or however long it's been, mm -hmm. how have you grown? What has changed? What maybe have you grown? Have I grown? Have I grown? Um, do you think I've grown? I'm I curious think. what you think, actually. It's so funny because oh, yeah. I feel like you probably have a better uh, feel on that than, 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 than I do. I do think, in my observation, and, and, and forgive me for just being presumptuous as if I you know, uh, am the barometer of your growth or not, but um, compared to where you were when we started, mm -hmm. compared to where you are now, maybe sitting so much, having conversations in real time with a couple men, mm -hmm. other men that are on our podcast for the most part. At first, I felt like you, uh, <laughs> how do I say this? Um, you, you know it's going to be good. No, no. <laughs> yeah. That you, I understand why this might be there. Mm -hmm. Needing to be sure that the men respected your perspective and your voice, mm -hmm. because oftentimes it's not. Mm -hmm. And with Justin and I and whoever else here, validate or would we dispute so i felt your energy was different then than it has been since then right um and i would say the growth is i've seen you allow the space for men to process without being challenged at in the moment mm -hmm. right to allow like jamie's going through something this man's going through, they're they're being vulnerable they're sharing what they're going through and sometimes we have to be able to do that without someone saying yeah but yeah but you should yeah but and I felt like more, there were more yeah buts, mm -hmm. and now there's space mm -hmm. in validating what we might be feeling, whether it's right or wrong. And then you'll then follow up with some data or some feelings. Hmm. Data or feelings, my two love languages. <laughs> uh, yeah, like I, fe I actually feel like we've grown t together and separately, right? Which is, I think, the, the ideal relationship whether, I mean, we, we talk about relationships often one-on-one, -on -one, right? Like a friend or a lover or a, you know, a family member, but it's also like we're all in relationships together. It's fascinating to me. And I don't think I could have really predicted my own growth and your own growth and how we've all come together. And I feel like we can, you know, the, in the best relationship, you feel comforted and challenged. 
uh, for me anyways, I know so maybe some for some people, Absolutely. it you know, it's they want more comforting, they want less challenge, or they want more challenge, less comforting. And to me, it's like equal parts is that sweet spot. And I feel like we're like, we're there, right? Mm-hmm. And I feel like you've come over to my side on certain things. I've come over to your side on certain things. And we kind of, uh, you know, I think we're trying to do something really hard, right? Yeah. Like most of the conversations around gender mm-hmm. are happening from a, a, a specific position. And, um, and, and I think it's wonderful. And those conversations are, are, are really great. But what we're trying to do is a little bit different. And that's why at the beginning, remember, I was like, who's this for? Like, right. like, who's going to listen to, to, to this? And it turns out, you know, a lot of people okay. are interested. They will come. Y- exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you feel like you've grown since we started? Justin? Because, by about, the way, oh. Justin, before you answer, I'm, how do you feel you've grown? I just told you. No? No, it's not satisfying. There might, there might have been some deflection there. It felt a little it bit. Felt a, really? Yeah, I'm sorry to mm-hmm. say that. I'm curious, like, personally. Like, just you, like... Oh. Oh, got it. Okay, like Liz, Liz, not Liz. like not, Liz. Not, not Liz. Liz the... Just a, a terrible way to ask the question. It's all Jamie's fault. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll own that. No, 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 no. no. I, or, or it's like I, I answered it as like work. Okay, Liz Plank, Liz, Liz. Liz me. Okay, just me Liz. as a person. Oh my gosh. I mean, but in your in your defense, he did ask. He did ask, uh, and the context was work. Of the podcast, I, it was, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, that's true. Oh my gosh, so much. Uh, I think that I was in a pattern of relationships and, you know, I, I guess our, our host only, our, this is kind of a one year anniversary for our host only episodes. We, I think we just started okay. like, you sure. know, yeah. yeah, like a year ago. And so I, I, it's funny, I'll look back at that and I think I was really in the middle of a big healing uh, season for me, but I was really, um, I was really focused on other people. And what they had done wrong, and their behavior, and what I thought their mistakes, basically. And I've, I think, and again, I'll look back in a year and be like, oh my god, I was like still doing that. I have been br- brought back the focus on myself more, and I feel so much better when I do that because then I'm like taking responsibility, mm-hmm. right? Um, and I also have found that focusing on other people is just a way to keep the focus off of myself, and it keeps your mind overthinking. Your mind thinks that you, it is making you safer by trying to solve something that you know isn't in your power to, to solve. And it's funny because I was rational. It, it it's not rational and 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 yeah, it's unproductive and not only unproductive, but it you know does all kinds of things to your nervous system. You know, Gabor Mate, who's been on the show, so much of. His work focuses on, again, emotional intelligence or emotional capability, which is something that we've talked about so much in the show. And his definition is so simple and has made me reflect a lot where it's not actually about the emotional skill. He says that emotional capability is just about being in the present moment. And in the present, right, Anger, um, dissatisfaction, all of, you know, negative so-called emotions are valid, but you have to communicate them. <laughs> and that's actually, you know, or, or set that boundary in a different way. But that's on you. I always, I come back to what Sean Mendez said on our show too, which is just like being authentic is just telling the truth. Mm. And I think I realized that I, because I was so afraid to, of confrontation or, mm-hmm. again, if I told someone how I felt, I was like hurting them or something. Yeah. Um, I would do a lot of, of harm to myself and then harm to my relationships and harm to other people too. Right. Mm, right. So anyway, that's like a long way to go into it. But yeah. No, that's beautiful. Mm, I think beautiful. that I can guarantee there's a lot of folks listening that could relate to that. 100%. What about you overthinking? How have you assessed overthinking in your life and how have you been able to heal it or use mm. it in a different way? How I assessed overthinking? I think the pendulum for me swung in the opposite direction. Mm. And... Uh, there have been times where I just stopped thinking and I just was so present with everything coming up. And sometimes that can also be dangerous because you're not used to being present in your body or present in your emotions mm-hmm. and it can overtake you. I think a lot of men experience this um, because we're so not used to uh, being in our feelings and being embodied like in our body. So I think for me it was I need to get out of my head and into my body, and then I got so into my body that I wasn't in my head. Right. Um, which again, it, it, 
what nobody tells you is that healing is not linear. Healing is not something that you're just, okay, I'm going to go to therapy, and then I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and every week I'm going to feel better. I'm going to get better. Mm -hmm. Like, therapy is not fun. Um, it's not supposed to be fun. It's designed to actually challenge you. And all of the healing arts and the healing modalities are not there to just be these fun little things that you do. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes you can go backwards. You can mm -hmm. feel like you're regressing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but when they uh, stirred up the Hudson River, <laughs> it was a disaster for years. Mm -hmm. um, and they had to do that in order to clean it out. And that's really what healing is. Wow. Uh, so I, I think I'm now getting to this place where I am finding much more of a balance of just being intuitive and listening to my body. Um, I am now, at least for the most part, uh, and Jamie can you know can attest to this or disagree, but I'm very much aware when I'm overthinking. Okay. You know, right now I'm actually making a. I have to make a huge decision. I'm not going to say what it is, but it has to do with my next movie, which is a really big film. Okay. And I have to make a really big choice, and it's hiring. It's hiring a very important person for this film. And it's not, don't worry, and it's, uh, in case you're listening, it's not an actor. It's not an actress. This is, we're not <laughs> casting, so no need to speculate here. But there are, uh, there's another studio partner, and there's choices that are coming at me, and people, everybody has an opinion. Mm -hmm. And I'm being really aware to not let everybody else's thoughts in and have them influence mine. I'm being really careful to not be just rational, um, because I don't think you can be just rational in business. And I think um, I'm, and I'm doing my best to also bring my intuition in. And what that means is that it can be frustrating to other people because it's not on the same timeline that everybody wants it to be on. Mm. Because at the end of the day, it's my film, I'm making it, and I need to figure out who the right partner is. And sometimes I have to get through the head and get into the heart. And then, um, and sometimes I have to do the opposite. So that's actually what I'm going through right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm practicing listening. You know, something that I did yesterday, which was really interesting, is in the Baha'i Faith, um, uh, Shogi Effendi calls it the five steps to prayer, which there's these five steps. Uh, basically what it is in two steps is you ask a question. So if you believe in God, if you believe in the universe, if you believe in your higher self or whatever it is that you believe in, you ask a question and then you sit and you pray and you give it up to whatever you believe in and you wait for the answer. You just wait. Okay. You just wait. And sometimes the answer will come in that moment or sometimes it will come a couple hours later. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's not always what you think it's going to be. But when you get the answer, you'll recognize like, oh, wait, that was already in me. I just couldn't see it. It was somewhere buried deep, deep, deep down mm -hmm. that I'd been thinking about and I couldn't see it. Why? Because our rational brain right. doesn't allow us to see it. And sometimes... Mm -hmm the emotional part of ourselves um, doesn't allow us to see it. And we have to quiet the noise. And so that's what I'm doing now. Mm. And despite the pressures uh, of the team, and sometimes even this guy to my right, <laughs> I'm like, hold on, stop. I have a feeling about this. I need to explore those feelings. I know it's not maybe best for the timeline of everybody else. I know it might not. It might be counterintuitive to, um, to the process or you know, to money. <laughs> and often the things that drive these decisions, but let me sit in this for a second and yeah. I'll make a decision soon. Mm -hmm. And that is how I know that I'm in the right place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's just an example of kind of where I am literally today. Mm -hmm. Like we just had this conversation 10 minutes ago. Yeah. Um, and, he, and, when he, and when he sees me in that place, he knows I'm not functioning just from one or the other and he can trust it and take a breath. Yeah. Okay. And then fend everybody else off who's trying, to, <laughs> who's trying to get me to make a decision. Well, when you go into that space, oftentimes, most oftentimes, um, the result is much better than when you don't do that. I think. Um, I think for everybody. For everybody. Everybody's results are better. Um, can I ask a follow-up question for you? Are we going to ask? Are we going to ask him I, any questions? I know Jamie. Are we guests on I, Jamie's podcast? I am. I think that's what's going to happen. By the way, next season you I guys just wait. It's just going to be Jamie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Speaking of in your head, how much you're in your head? You live in your heart, even though your head is in there too. For the ones we have listening to us, for the so many people that write us and say that they have been moved and touched and maybe learned something or just had space to be, um, to live their thoughts and feelings through something you have shared or you or myself. 
Um, I would love for you to share. See that smile on his face? Right no, that's how you know you're in trouble. <laughs> like, you this... You're about to get. You care about this subject so much. You've done a lot of work. We've talked about that. I am curious to know how you are now a better man, husband, father, tangibly, like the work that you've done. Now, what is it that you do, like tangibly? on a daily basis to show up and to be the man that you are hoping other men can become. Mm. I mean, there's not one thing. It's like all of it. It's, it's everything. It's, I can't, it's, it, what's interesting is I take, I, I feel often like a, like a sponge. And sometimes I feel like a sponge that doesn't have an identity and I can, that can go, my, my inner critic can come out. And um, I could feel like, wait, but I have no individuality or I didn't come up with any of this, so I don't have an identity. Um, and then other times I'm a sponge and I'm really grateful for it because it's allowing me to be a better man. And what I mean by that is I take so much with me of like everything that I do, every book that I read, every every conversation we've ever had, it just stays in in my brain and in my heart. And I draw on that all the time. That's something that I that I do on a daily basis is I'm constantly drawing on things that have moved me, um, things that you've said in passing a year and a half ago, I'll randomly just think about and it'll then what I'll do is it'll trigger action. It could be as simple as being exhausted, knowing my wife's exhausted, knowing where our housekeeper's coming coming in the morning, but seeing the dishes in the sink and saying like Okay, I know she's tired. I'm tired. Why wouldn't I do them? And then changing that thought and going into, oh, wow, I feel so honored that I can do it. Mm. And I feel so grateful that I can take this burden off of my wife who has been socially programmed to think she has to do the dishes. Or something right right now, like uh, something that Shaka said, who was on the podcast last year, Mm. taking a moment to fold my children's laundry. Hmm. Like, and when he said that, Mm -hmm. because he didn't get to do that in prison, I think about like, what a gift I have right now. And then I look at the clothes and it makes me emotional because they're not gonna be this little anymore. And one day I'm not gonna fold their clothes. And I'm like, oh, so even if it's, even if it's just some random time and I see the, the clothes on the floor and Emily started folding them and I sat down with her and I just folded the clothes and I looked at my kids' clothes. I was so grateful. These are things that I've learned just doing the show. Um, so I guess for me, it's I absorb and I absorb and I absorb and then I really, really try to put it in action because mm-hmm. I don't want to ever be a person that, uh, that learns these things and then doesn't apply them. Um, and applying them isn't always easy. It's messy. The other thing I think that is really important is I think the the main, like the best way to become a better man or a better husband or a better friend, I believe comes down to a quote that my wife said, which is that the greatest form of activism is Mm self-activism. The greatest. I cannot begin to tweet or Instagram or proclaim or, or post Black Lives Matter or talk about Iran if I have no idea what any of those things mean to me, and before I can even get to that point, I have to figure out who I am, what moves me, and I have to do that, like, as I say in my own book, like the hard work of heart work. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that is really challenging. So I can't show up for her unless I show up for myself. So I was, I've been thinking about the golden rule recently, mm-hmm. this idea of like, do unto others mm-hmm. as you would have them do unto, unto you, which we always hear is like, treat, Treat others the way you want to be treated. And I'm thinking about it differently now. Mm. I'm thinking about it as, no, I need to treat myself the way I want others to treat me. Mm. I, it actually has to start with me. Mm. Yeah. And, and I never thought about it that way. Mm. Like, it's not just do, doing unto others. It's like, no, no. Because I've done that a lot in my life. I've been so nice to everybody and terrible to myself. And that hasn't led me anywhere. It's, I've been filled with insecurity and shame. It's led me into spirals of addictions. And, uh, and, and all in all, what I need to learn how to do is actually to be kind to myself. 
So a, a specific tangible thing, and then I'm going to stop because you asked me this question. In the mornings, what I've been doing is twofold. One is I'm becoming super hyper aware of my negative thoughts. Mm. Not so much about others. And what's interesting is, is that there's a correlation between the way we think about ourselves and the way we think about others. Mm-hmm. And nobody really talks about that. The harder you are on yourself, the more, as you were kind of saying, you will project and treat others and look at others and find their faults. And what do we know in the Baha'i writings? What are we, what are we told? If a man has 10 good qualities and one bad, to look at the 10 and to forget the one. And if a man has one good quality and 10 bad, to look at the one and to forget the 10. But we never do that to ourselves. Mm-hmm. We always find our own negative things. Mm. So I have been writing in the morning for months now um, things that I like about myself, mm. things that I love about myself, things that I like about my body, which I've never done in my life. I'm 38 years old, and I am building a bridge from my psyche to my heart and telling myself the things that I should have told myself or that somebody should have told me when I was 12 or when I was eight. The things that I tell my children every single night before they go to sleep, I'm now finally telling those things to myself. And then I'm noticing that when I look in the mirror, I'm not being as harsh on myself. And so I started writing these things and then I look in the mirror and if I notice that I'm like, oh, I don't like that, or oh, my scar looks like crap, you know, from the skin cancer that I had, or, or I'll go back to feeling like my nose is too big, or all the things that I felt when I was a kid, I'll then start to find something I like about it, which I never had the power to do. And I will actually look in the mirror, and I'll smile at myself, and I'll find something that I like. And that, strangely, changes the entire dynamic of everybody I interact with on a day where I do it. It changes the relationship I have with my wife. Um, And by being kind to myself, I'm so much kinder to everybody else without even trying. It's not like a thought where I have to be kind. I'm just naturally lifted Mm -hmm. in that place. Mm. Um, And then it comes back because that's that's the incredible law of the universe, this amazing boomerang that God created, which is, you know, what you put out comes back to you. But I think we've been thinking about it wrong. It's also what we give to ourselves. Thanks, man. I love that when you share your personal journey. I think a lot of people, when you write your book, and um, for all of us and everybody, it's good to hear what people personally go through. But f- f- specifically because this podcast and the title of it and some of the work that you're doing, and um, it's good that people get to hear your process. I have a question for you before. <clears throat> I have one for Jamie, too. Okay, Uh-oh, go, for- go. No, you, you go first. You go first. You go first. Stop it. Stop you, go first. you go first. Okay. I'll go, but then you can follow up Do with it. whatever. You, and you can answer whichever you want. I was just thinking about you so much more than usual about how, like, I, I, like I'm like, how does Jamie do it? Like, how does Jamie be such a, 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 like, phenomenal like you're a great host you're great at your job you're running the studio like it's like your work life is like thriving like you're a grammy like all you've done all that and then you're also this really really good friend right Mm -hmm. i think a lot about what you've said on our show which is you know your rule about you know when you get in the car you're going to call someone that you love and check in on them and obviously and you do that for for our guests right like you always leave our guests with something uh, that they can feel loved for and mm-hmm. seen uh, by with you. And, and, and I think that is, is just so great. And But then I also go like, yeah, h- how do you manage to do all... And then your wife, like your wife, you're like, you love her. And I, I, we went to, I went to dinner the other day after one of our recordings and I walked into the restaurant. Did I, did I, I didn't talk about this. This is our last show. I walk into the restaurant. I'm on this date. And then uh, I get to the hostess and it's Jamie. <laughs> like, and I'm like, what's going on? Pretending to be the hostess. Pretending to be the host. The host. <laughs> um, and, then I, and then I just laughed for like 20 minutes. And I, you know, saw you with your wife and just, you know, you're, you're such you're such a great dad. You're such a, you know, you're, we called your daughter on, on air and she only had positive things to say. So what are the things that you do? Good. Well, that's how you make Good. everyone feel. <laughs> you know, what are the things that, that, that you do? Not just, because again, I know it starts with you, right? Yeah, like yeah, you're yeah. treating other people probably the way that you've learned and worked hard to treat yourself. So the question is? What do you do? 
what what are the practical things that you oh, do oh, in secret? order to be happy and to make other you know to to okay. make other people? How do we all be um, like Jamie? Uh, no, godly. Here's what I think. Rules you live by. Okay, here's the rule I live by. Um, there's a quote that I try to live by, and it, and it means a lot to me. Bring thyself to account each day, ere thou art summoned to a reckoning. Bring thyself to account each day. So, um, I try to because I want to be better. I've screwed up so much in my life in different ways. I've done some good things, but I've done a lot of things that I regret. Um, and I don't want to repeat that. I also want to be what I say I want to be. Mm. I want to be the very thing that I expect my brother uh, Justin here, who is wonderful and brilliant and cares. I don't want to like demand that of him and hold him his feet to the fire and then not be it myself. How do I do that? I bring myself to account, which means reflect every day. What did I do today that I could have done better? It's not to like be hard on myself. What did I miss? We had a shoot not too long ago where there were some technical difficulties and I got angry with our team. I go home that night and I go, is that the best way I could, I dealt with that? How could I have done it better? Every day I do that. Not because I'm like hard on myself. Like It's because I just want to be better. Mm. I want to be a better man. I want to be a better father and a better husband and a better boss and a better human. So I can't just say it. I have to reflect and then look back on my day and think, okay, I could have adjusted this, I could have done that differently, and then I show up tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> have conversations, ask questions about, I ask my team oftentimes, what could I have done better this week? Okay. To people that are underneath me, so to speak. Um, so that is one of the ways that I, I just ask myself tough questions that way. And I've done it, I believe, through 12-step work. Right. Because when you do 12-step work, it's all about accountability. Right. Um, and looking inward, and I still screw up. I asked my wife, do you know what? So my wife says to me, um, she's exhausted in the morning. She gets up at 5.30 because, you know, the kids and the whole routine. And I end up going to bed much later than she does. She's disciplined. She goes to bed at 9 or 10, and I'm up till 1 or 2 because at the end of the day when we're with our kids and I'm with my wife, then I'll start going through all of my emails and start looking at work. So I go to bed later. So I don't get up in the morning. I get up at 7.30. By the time, and I'm with them for like 30 minutes now. And I can see she's exhausted. And she's been, and she won't ask something of me more to get up because she knows that I'm up late. But I see she's exhausted and I want to get up and I don't fucking get up. I don't get up. And I've told her I'll get up and I don't get up. I got to be better. I just get up, Jamie. I'll get up for golf. I was up for here. But I have an excuse. I work late and I didn't get as much sleep, so it's reasonable that I don't get up. Just get the flip up. Um, so I need to be more accountable in that. Um, but I think about that. Like, how do I just be better tomorrow in everything I do? Um, and I keep stumbling like that. I just, mm -hmm. you know, and I think it's important for me and for men, and what I experience a lot is that we say we want to do things differently, we want to be better, uh, but we oftentimes don't put our money where our mouth is. And I think women probably are exhausted <laughs> from that. Like, yeah. How I many can... times have you heard a man say he wants to be better and then mm -hmm. doesn't do you the work. feel disappointed because mm -hmm. he doesn't do the work? Mm -hmm. I think that that's a very normal thing, mm -hmm. unfortunate, mm -hmm. unfortunately. But not only just for women, of course, like we talk a lot about how we can be better in that space. But just even if we're just a, a group of men, let's say we're on an island with only 100 men, and it was just us, and now we didn't have to think about other genders and how to do that. Still, how do I be a better person? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I, when I am mistreated by, uh, uh, like, a man, most often I have, and this is a new thing that has helped me, actually. I'll just go, like, oh, that's how he treats himself. You know, that, that it is not a reflection on me. Obviously, it's painful, and I would want to be treated otherwise, but it's also my job to leave that situation and you know um there's a saying which i'll get canceled for saying it but um i'm just gonna say it anyways it's okay you know we that, can renew your subscription okay great perfect i need a vacation anyways um you know that there are no victims there's just volunteers oh wow and that like 
if you just heard that and that was painful or uncomfortable or or you are angry at me for saying it all of those things are valid but like reflect on that like why does that make you uncomfortable and it made me uncomfortable the first time that I read it I was like wait a minute I I uh, you know I I'm I'm a victim here I I was a victim of this or I, I was a victim of that but how did I volunteer what part and even if it's one percent you know what part is me that I can change because then I get, you know, that's what I actually have control over. And that's how I can actually that's change right. my life. Mm -hmm. I had this boyfriend. I've probably talked about this because I talk about it all the time. I, one of my ex-boyfriends, I was like, what's the voice inside your, we're comparing like the voice inside your head. And my voice, I'm sure your voice is the same way. It's like a drill sergeant, right? It's like, and it starts screaming first thing in the morning, 5 a, you know. Wait, your voice says man up too? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Woman up. Uh, but yeah, it's saying very, I mean, it's, yeah. it, it, that'd be a good movie, actually, like the gender difference, right, between that very disciplined voice. But but my boyfriend at the time was like, oh, w w like, what's the voice inside my head? And he was like, um, kind of sounds like a coach. And I was like so impressed and envious all at once right. because it, but because, because it's not, you know, my voice is like, you're amazing and everything's great. It's actually someone who's trying and invested in your self-improvement, right? Having a coach as opposed to having a drill sergeant or a, you know, whatever, like a puppet that, or, or like a Muppet that just says everything you're doing is great. In, in the middle is actually where change is possible. And I think where happiness relies where, yeah, you're holding yourself accountable and you're keeping promises to yourself. Self, right? Mm -hmm. If you say one thing, you do it. Or you try and build, make changes so that you can be in a position to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so great. And you can change your voice. So for mm -hmm. listeners too, I think it's important to know that yeah. you can change that yeah. voice. I've, I've witnessed it firsthand. Yeah. That's right. And some of that goes to what I was saying earlier, which is learning how to look at yourself and actually mm -hmm. be that voice. Because the voice inside of us is just mimicking um, the oh. voice that we've heard, you yeah. know, as children, and, mm -hmm. um, and it really is just that little, that little kid, that little kid in us that that needs healing. Yeah. So, with that, um, I'm I'm thankful that, and grateful that we talk about these things and hear what we're going through. Yeah. And for the people that are listening to us, um, may I offer that you too, and I'm sure you do, but I imagine so many men don't. Take a breath, reflect on how your life can be better, what you can do better in your partner's life, in your children's life. How can you be a better dad um, or a better worker, coworker? Like to really reflect. Doesn't mean you're bad, you're amazing, and you're wonderful. Um, God created you noble, uh -huh. and, and yet you may have some trauma or some unlearning to do, and it's okay. It doesn't make us less manly. It makes us, I believe, more worthy when we're willing to reflect and to make little small corrections and maybe some big ones when needed. Um, makes us human. Makes mm -hmm. us human. Yeah. We need, we're, we all need to get on the same, uh, on the same boat, on the same train. And yeah. it's little things, it's little actions that make the big difference. Little actions, That's baby. True. Uh, we'll talk to you next time. Who, who are we? Uh, we're man enough. <laughs> <laughs> we're human enough. We're human enough. I'm Justin Baldoni. I'm Liz Plank. I'm Jamie Heath. And this is Man Enough.